What's going on guys, welcome to the channel. Um, in today's video, we have a 2016 Subaru Impreza. It's fully loaded, uh, comes with keyless entry, and um, I'm fighting a TPMS light issue on this car. So, uh, the reason I'm bringing up keyless entry and all that is because uh, usually those two are correlated. Uh, TPMS works off of uh, like a radio frequency, and please correct me if I'm wrong. If I, if anything, that I say in this video is wrong, uh, please go ahead and list it in the comment below or in the comment section below. Um, but this is just after doing my own research. But anyways, uh, the key, the keyless entry and the TPMS uh, sensors both operate off of a um, radio frequency hub or a radio frequency module. So how it works is that um, your key has a, your key has a, what's it called? A, um, it has a little chip in it. Let's 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 just simplify things. Your key has a chip in it. Each TPMS sensor or each uh, tire has a chip in it as well that transmits a radio frequency signal. And the the radio frequency of the signal is 315 millihertz uh, or MHZ. And when it transmits this radio frequency, there's a module that accepts this radio frequency. So um, you know, as you walk up to the car and your smart key unlocks the car. There's a module in there that says, hey, there's this radio frequency that's pulling up to the car or walking up to the car that has its own unique ID. And, you know, it's your key. So it automatically unlocks the car or lets you turn on the car and drive off. Same thing goes for the TPMS sensors. The TPMS sensors, they transmit a radio frequency uh, and they each have their own unique ID. And they they read the, the tire pressure and they send it to this module that's in this part of the car, uh, we'll get to this in a bit, uh, it'll transmit this signal to that uh, module and the module will send it to your dash and your, and your dash will display your tire pressures, um, you know, making sure that all your tires are fully uh, inflated or whatever. But this car came back from the body shop. So this car was actually hit on the driver's side um, quarter panel, all right? So car came back from the body shop had a TPMS light on. I went through all my diagnostic testing uh, to say. So the first thing you do is you go through each and every tire, make sure that you're inflated to the right um, pressure. Check. Uh, take my scan tool. So I have an Autel scan tool. It's an OBD scan tool that clears codes. Plug that in, cleared whatever codes is on there. But I was getting one code back, which was saying failed communication with TPMS module, basically. Um, so I couldn't clear that. I unplugged that. I grabbed my maxi TPMS sensor. So this is a maxi TPMS. Um, this is like a programmer for like your TPMS sensors. And it also, um, it also has like a, a radio frequency, uh, scanner or transmitter in a way. So it has a way to tell if your battery is, or like your, your battery in your, uh, car remote or your keyless entry is dying it'll like transmit a weak signal it, it basically can detect the strength of the signals so the first thing i did with this uh, and by the way there's there's a tons of videos on how to operate this this tool so what i did is i went through each i went through each corner of the uh, the car so i went to this tire that tire and so on and read that there was a signal so each tire displayed a signal now if it doesn't display a signal uh, it could very possibly mean that your TPMS sensor is dead, but I got a signal from each and every one of these. Um, so I couldn't clear the codes. I checked the TPMS sensors. They're all good. So that basically meant that there was no communication to the TPMS sensor. All right. So after doing a little bit of research online, I found out that, uh, I think this, this also applies to the Subaru Crosstrek. So Similar models of the Impreza and the Crosstrek. I found out that the the RFH module, the radio frequency module, uh, or we'll call it the the what's it called the, the we'll just call it the RFH module. Anyways, I found that the RFH module was in this area, and sure enough, the car was hit in this area. So in my mind, I'm saying, well, if the car was hit in that area, then probably that module was either damaged or when it was at the body shop, they forgot to plug it in because it happens, all right? So let's uh, turn this camera around. All right, so to get this uh, taken apart, there's a uh, there's a trim that goes here, 
take that off and there's like two screws holding that together uh and then there's like a there's this piece that comes up and it displays your your spare tire and all that and there's a trim that pops off here trim that pops off there and there's like a couple screws uh but anyways uh and yeah there's a trim up here this white piece of trim that pops off and there's like a screw that holds it right here and then this just kind of pops off i don't have it all the way off because i don't want to get into the trim down there this is good enough so i popped it off and sure enough this is what i found i found a let's see i can't really get up close to it but uh the, it says uh, fa receiver assembly so automatically when i saw the word receiver on there you know thinking to myself well this is probably the rf receiver but before i started taking this apart um i was looking around and i found um this bad boy it was uh it was mounted down here uh you could see those two holes it was mounted there it was actually on the other side and there's like a a bolt sticking through and there's a nut hole like a 10 millimeter nut hole in it uh, i pull it out and sure enough this is actually broken um and the reason i pulled it off of course because it says uh right there top corner tpms unit and hopefully you can screenshot this if it's focused enough um but anyways it says tpms unit right there so boom tpms unit i take it apart or i take it off the bracket off the bracket falls off of it so the bracket was broken and they had just taped it off uh, just to mount it back up but after doing a little bit of examination i look inside and you can see in there there's like rust or corrosion and that basically just kind of tells me that uh this thing probably got fried up like water got in it or something because at one point this this part of the car was a little bit exposed after it was hit so um at first i was worried and then i was like this might be a good thing so because this car or actually here let me pause right there let's go to the other car all right guys so this is the donor vehicle that we used to take the quarter panel off of or the skin and put it on the other car but what i wanted to show you guys is that this car is actually uh, a more basic model so it doesn't have uh like it doesn't have like fancy equipment in it and this actually has the standard key with like the the blade that goes inside the ignition and turns on it's not a push to start so in this case because it's not a smart key and correct me if i'm wrong this has one module for both that transmits usually that's how it is in a lot of cars by the way guys um usually it's one module that transmits or accepts signals from both the tpms sensors and the keys so if you're in this situation uh i'm sorry to say it but I think you're kind of screwed and let me tell you why uh because if you're replacing this module um and i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong um if you're replacing this module because it also accepts the signals from the keys then you're looking at programming not only the tpms sensors but you're looking at programming those keys and anytime it, you got to program keys to your car uh that's when you require dealership access or uh, someone who's licensed to do such tasks i i myself am not licensed or not able to do such tasks but if you're in this situation where it's one module so you can see right here it says keyless entry on there too so if you're in this in this situation um then i think you're kind of screwed but i could be wrong but anyways uh let's go back to the other car all right guys so we are back at the fancy fully loaded impreza so if you have a fully loaded one i think that we are good to go because um the keyless entry so what i did is i took that module where did i put that module i took this tpms module and i unplugged it um set that aside and then i took my my keyless entry or my remote and i'll press the button and it works so that tells me that this module for the keyless entry is separate from the tpms module so um we should be good uh, i did go ahead i got on ebay and i looked up this part number right here 2820 so on uh, i looked up that part number and i was uh, fortunate to find a used part on ebay for around 65 dollars so basically it was like 68 bucks 
shipped to my house. So check it out. If you guys can see right here, there is no more TPMS light. It has been several days. Uh, I ordered the part on eBay. I was able to find a used one for around $70. Um, I think I mentioned that in a uh, couple days ago. So uh, we went ahead and got the new part installed. I still need to mount it up to the, the bracket. I have it right now just hanging loose. So that's the bracket that's gonna mount up to the to the, to the wall there with the 10 millimeter bolt. I showed you guys where it mounts. Uh, so I went ahead, I, I hooked it up, I cleared the code, so it still stayed on, the code still stayed on, so the the, the light stayed on when I, um, when I connected it, so you still have to connect your OBD scan tool, uh, whether it's a Bluetooth one or my fancy one right there, um, I think the little Bluetooth one should work, but yeah, I got it to, I plugged it in, cleared the code, there's no more codes, we are good to go, I drove it around, uh, for a couple miles and uh, lights been off so that's a good sign but uh, yeah guys that's how you change your TPMS module or that's how you uh, you know narrow it down if you're in my boat um, I don't think these parts really do go bad I just I just uh, was reluctant enough to be in this situation where when the car was hit this happened to be in its way and uh, yeah uh, thank you guys for watching and again here's the part number i'll go ahead and um i'll try to find the part on like subaruparts.com or something and put a link in the description down below but uh yeah hopefully this should help you guys uh thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in another video that should or that hopefully will be helpful hopefully this was helpful for you guys all right see you guys around